Hey good people, it is Tishara from Politics and Fashion here today with a video that is all about basics and specifically why your basics are boring. I want to solve this affliction. I do. I've mentioned before that one might call me the Dr. Fauci of fashion and I think this is an ailment and one that is keeping your wardrobe sicker than what you realize. It likely is making you feel like you have to have the newest piece, the it piece, the over the top piece, the trendy piece, when really what you may actually need, may actually need, is to find ways to enliven your basics. So I'm going to share five tips with you today. I'm going to actually give you some styling inspiration behind each tip. So if that sounds good to you, you have made it to the right place, good friend. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel. You are following me all over the internet, including TikTok and Instagram. And let's get started with today's video. Now, the first tip is actually about the way that you are wearing your basics, and that is that you're not playing around with silhouettes. This actually transcends any color combination in your wardrobe, but I think it's a very important tip and actually foundational principle to keep in mind as you are getting dressed. So what do I mean by juxtaposing or changing silhouettes? I talk to you all often about this idea that you don't want your top and your bottom or your outerwear and your innerwear to all have the same type of style or fit. Actually, my most recent capsule wardrobe video is an excellent example of this and I will link it down below. I am very disciplined not to wear a baggy top, for example, with a baggy bottom or a loose fitting top with a loose fitting bottom or to wear a slim top with a slim bottom or to wear a loose fitting dress with a heavy coat or to wear maybe a long blazer with a long skirt, right? Everything has to have balance. Everything is meant to provide like the yin and the yang, the opposite of the other piece. Sometimes it's not all about necessarily the different fit. It can just be about something simple as tucking in the shirt. Here's an example. I am going to be styling the all black outfit that I'm wearing today in ways that elucidate or highlight each of these tips, okay? So I'm wearing this oversized sweater. I grabbed it in an extra large because I did want it to fit oversized with a pair of high-waisted black tailored trousers from Pixie Market. Take a look at what this looks like when I untuck the shirt. It's fine right? It, it's just a black sweater with a pair of black pants. You can't go wrong. But it's not necessarily the most stylish thing that you will see, okay? Now, take a look at what happens when I take this same sweater and I give it what I call a half tuck. All of a sudden, the silhouettes look different. That half tuck just right in the front, leaving the back out, makes it look a bit more intentional and also a bit more elevated. Another example of this might be if I wore this sweater with a pair of skinny jeans or if I wore it with a mini skirt, for example. I think the mini skirt would actually really be a great way to highlight this principle because I'm wearing something oversized up top with something that's shorter or a bit narrower on the bottom. Whatever it is that you decide to do as far as playing with silhouettes is concerned, just keep that in mind because maybe it's not actually the color of what you're wearing or it's not the fact that you're wearing a basic it may simply be how you are wearing that basic number two is that you're not accessorizing you are not accessorizing and maybe you're adding you know some jewelry a cute little handbag and that's fine but I'm talking about those accessories like scarves like belts like hats that are truly going to take your outfit up a notch I happen to believe that that's where true style resides like that's really putting it in the pocket okay if this was sports I don't know a lot but I do know that Tom Brady, who's one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, people say that he is a pocket passer, okay? That means he can get in the pocket, throw the ball, they catch the ball, they run a touchdown. I don't have much more for the analogy because I don't know all the things on the field and the yardage and stuff like that, okay? But he's clutch because he's in the pocket. <laughs> okay similarly accessories are going to put you in the pocket so let's take the outfit that I'm wearing once again what I have done I've styled it with accessories in two ways for you all first let's look at the uh the way they obi belt and I have it here 
it is something that does not get nearly enough wear in my wardrobe and so when I was thinking about okay what is an accessory that can take this outfit over the top the Loewe belt was it for me the half tuck is essential here because the sweater is a bit of a thicker knit but I do believe that it hits right at the perfect point of the waist whenever I put the belt on and just look at how the silhouette of the outfit also changed with the OB belt now I'm wearing an all black outfit but look at what happens when I put this belt on automatically it looks intentional and it looks stylish right not just because of the silhouette of the OB belt and by the way there are a million dupes of this I, I've seen them on Etsy so I'll link both this version and the more affordable ones down below so it's not just because of the cut of the belt I think it's also because I broke up the all black with another black piece of course but still it adds a new texture with the leather belt and it also adds a new silhouette another example with a belt that may not be as far out there for some folks is going to be my Valentino V logo belt and again I think any belt would do here especially if it has some sort of metallic hardware uh, I think that with the half tuck in the front that little pop of the V it makes the outfit look very elevated very intentional once again I'm gonna use the same words likely throughout this entire video because that is my style pillar of elevated simplicity and it really is my goal when I'm trying to style up or dress up basic pieces okay and so we just went from snooze fest to, oh, let me sit up and, and, and pay a little bit of attention to who's walking in the room simply by adding a belt to the waist of the pants. Another thing I did was also add a scarf and I'm adding here my Hermes scarf. I got this scarf last year. I have a few Hermes scarves, but for sure this one is my favorite, I think because it's black and white and... I'm a neutral gal, what can I say, okay? And so I think between the scarf and the belt, all of a sudden we are cooking with grease. The other thing, of course, is going to be sunglasses. It has taken me a while to really understand the importance of sunglasses in my wardrobe. But now that I am here, I am not looking back, okay? So for eyewear with the first outfit, we're going to wear those retro Amazon sunnies. These are Tom Ford dupes, and they are really making me want the Tom Ford versions. Not the ones that are identical to these, but there are some that are even more oversized, almost like an aviator frame. They are delicious, okay? And so wearing that retro sunny that has the yellow lens also brings in a bit of color here. Hopping over to the second outfit, take a look at these cat eye sunnies from Fendi. And what I've done is added the pop of gold on the side of these sunglasses. And I think then we're starting to match up the different metallics. So we got the metallic in the sunnies and the metallic in the belts and the metallic in the earrings, which I will get to in just a bit. I'm not wearing a hat here because I don't have a black fedora. I have a white fedora that I could have put on for a nice contrast. But just keep in mind that a hat would also do something really dope with this outfit. I'm wearing all black. Once again, it's all black. But these key accessories have all of a sudden made it a look for sure. The other common mistake is that you are not playing around with texture. Everything just looks the same. Similar to the silhouette mistake. Everything is looking the same to the eye. Everything just reads flat. And how could that not be boring? In order to make something more interesting and more exciting, we gotta play with texture, which is why I think wearing this cashmere sweater really works well with these polyester blend pants because what happens is the pants tend to read very flat. It is the texture of the sweater that makes the look automatically just a little bit more bold and a little bit more interesting. Then in the case of the second outfit, when I add the silk to it, the silk scarf, okay, we got another texture. And then when I add in the case of the first outfit, the wide leather belt, we got another texture. So all of these textures are helping the outfit to just kind of have a little bit of judge to it, judge to it, judge to it. You know what I'm trying to say, girl. It makes the outfit a lot more enticing than just, it's like 
perfect example. If you sat down to eat dinner and everything on your plate was seasoned the same way, even if it was different types of food, that wouldn't be very appetizing, right? If you seasoned your fish the same way you seasoned your sweet potatoes, the same way you seasoned your broccoli, and then your side salad had, I don't know, no dressing on it, right? That wouldn't be something that would really excite you about your meal. But if each element on your plate was cooked a little bit different, everything can't be fried, maybe you got fried fish, but then you got a baked sweet potato. Do you know what I'm saying? Like you want to have different elements in the outfit, even if they are basics. And I've seen this done so well with fur. I've seen it done with feathers. I've seen it done with patent leather, etc. And in the case of patent leather, with outfit number one, what I decided to do was instead of wearing a heel, was to wear my patent leather shoes. These are um, my loafers from Loewe. I love to wear them when I am wearing an all black outfit or when I'm wearing all basics because I think the patent leather takes it up a notch. Same thing is true for the second outfit because I am wearing these croc embossed boots. These are by Shoots and I think that texture on top of the black pants which I just said were pretty flat okay and, and, and pretty unappetizing pretty basic. Now when I mix the croc embossing on top of the black pants it does something different. It hits different. This is also a common mistake and why you likely are straying away from basics because you don't realize the way that bold shoes can really make your outfit pop. For sure. And I'm talking about bold shoes and that can be bold with color, it could be bold with texture, or it could just be a neutral that provides a high contrast. These boots have had the girls in a chokehold here <laughs> on Instagram, on TikTok. In real life, I can barely walk five steps without someone stopping me and talking to me about these Zara Flame boots. Now these are sold out but the good part is that cowboy boots are definitely trending and so I have found other examples of these. They do not have to be a pair of cowboy boots but there's something about the texture once again but also the contrast of the flame that just really makes a neutral outfit pop also makes your basics pop. The YSL Mules is another pair of shoes that y'all see all the time. I am very intentional about pulling these out when I'm wearing my basics because I do think the fur adds a nice bit of texture and a boldness to the look. And let's not forget what a high contrast could do to basics. For example, metallics are trending. A pair of silver boots would be great. I don't have any metallic boots, but I do have these white booties from Inez. I think if you're wearing a neutral outfit, if you were wearing a basic outfit, the high contrast with your shoes, if they are a solid color like white, silver, gold, any kind of metallic could be really dope as well. And I've already mentioned these two pair of shoes. You've seen me styling these in the video, but I'll bring them here again because I do think not only do they provide texture, but they also have a boldness. The texture of the patent leather, just look how that looks up against the cashmere sweater. Both black, but they look so different. And that's what you want. You want that juxtaposition. And the same thing with these, because although they're black, they do have the texture of the faux croc or the croc embossing. Next is that you are not wearing statement jewelry. And I popped this out of the accessories category because I think it needs its own kind of talking points, its own conversation, its own seat at the table, okay? Jewelry, jewelry, jewelry. And you don't have to wear bold gold dangling earrings, a wrist full, a bust down wrist, okay? A wrist full of bracelets like I do on a daily basis. But I would ask myself, if you feel like your basics are boring, how are you accessorizing them with jewelry? Maybe gold isn't your thing, maybe silver is. Are you wearing your favorite silver pieces or do you have silver pieces that maybe have some healing stones or some gemstones? in it? What if you had a really dope silver cuff that had turquoise in the middle of it, right? If you don't want to wear bold earrings and you want to wear studs, for example, what if you had different types of studs, different types of earrings? What if you had multiple piercings like I do and so you really give the girls a look with your ear candy? What if you don't like metallics or metals at all and you are more of like an acrylic or a resin person or you like uh, beaded jewelry, for example? example. 
bring those things to the forefront of your look. I never ever leave my house without first stopping by this front or this first drawer that's right here that has my accessories in it. I love to layer necklaces. I love to have very bold pieces, for example, and my jewelry consumption has looked different over the years. At one point I was into super duper cultural bold beaded pieces. Now I'm into gold pieces. I love to patronize black owned businesses because I think that the aesthetic really suits my style. Whatever it is, your jewelry is literally the icing on the cake, okay? It is likely the last thing you put on, but the first thing that people see. And so when we say that our basics are boring, no, you just have not given them interest. You haven't given me something to look at. That's why they are boring. And the fifth and final reason why your basics are boring is because uh, you are selecting boring pieces. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. That's the easiest way to say it. Now, there are some pieces that it just, it is what it is, right? A pair of tailored trousers is a pair of tailored trousers. And you may not want the funkiest, edgiest tailored trousers. A white button down may just be a white button down. But when you have those staples checked off, those foundational pieces checked off, then why not play around a bit with different types of basics? J. Crew, for example, and I'll pop it up on the screen, has this really dope button down. It's in white. It comes in like maybe three or four colors. But I'm drawn to the white one with feathers around the sleeves. And I think the feathers are removable. Maybe not. I could be lying. It don't matter because we're going to wear the feathers. Okay? <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. Ain't a boring thing about it. Yes, it's white. Yes, it's in a neutral color, but it has feathers around the sleeves. It is a new take on a classic silhouette. Similarly, what if instead of getting a pair of denim that you were used to having, right, that pair of jeans that you've been wearing the same silhouette since 1997, what if you, what if you decided to do maybe some cargo jeans? What if you did ripped denim? What if you did wide leg jeans? What if you did a relaxed fit? What if you did a boyfriend cut? There are so many different options that don't just have to be the classic piece that we are accustomed to thinking about when we think basic. We can do basics with a twist. I think I have plenty of them in my wardrobe. Another example is a classic trench coat, right? We are accustomed to seeing what I call that as inspector gadget type of silhouette. But what about this trench that I showed you all from Koss? What about the trench that I have from a wave mode with the panels on the bottom? Do you see where I'm going here? The idea is if you have those classic silhouettes that you know you're going to wear day to day, and even if you don't, if you're just someone who wants more of an edgier style, go for the edgier piece. That is going to for sure ensure that your basics are not boring because you are wearing basic pieces, but you're wearing them with new silhouettes. And that is it, good people. A short and sweet video that I really hope helps as you are thinking about ways that you can ensure that you are dressing your best, you are feeling your best. My thing is this, I want to be able to go in my closet and get dressed in less than 15 minutes, for sure. Less than five, really, because I have my capsule pieces that are right in front of me that are all interchangeable. And I think in order for us to be able to do that, we have to expand our idea of those wardrobe essentials and find new and exciting ways to wear them. Don't nobody want to look like they back in the habit from Sister Act 2 or from Sister Act. You know, you, nobody trying to look, 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 look like a school marm, okay? And I get it. I get it, and I think there is a common misconception, as I've said, that these pieces have to be boring. And I say once again, stop blaming the pieces. It really is how we are wearing them or how we aren't 
styling them, okay? If you have any questions, let me know down below. Also share with our tribe, what have you found to be very helpful tips as it comes down to styling basics? We would love to know. In the meantime, make sure you are subscribed to my channel. You are following me all across social media, and I will see you good people cross the internet. Peace.